Now starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone and welcome to today's online class. My name is Christina Roki and I am the Health Education's Webinar Coordinator. Today's webinar is Growing Healthy Families. Today's health educator is Sin Liu. Dr. Liu is a preventative care specialist who graduated from Loma Linda University with her master's and doctorate in public health. She currently works for Beaver Medical Group as a preventative care specialist and a bariatric educator. She has presented to many groups on a wide variety of health topics and will be presenting today's webinar. Welcome, Dr. Liu. Welcome. Thank you, Christina. And welcome, everyone, to our discussion about growing healthy families. Today, the goals of our session include to learn about the health benefits of eating healthy, to learn about eating healthy, specifically looking at and learning about nutrient-dense foods, how to portion your foods, label reading, reducing junk food in the house, incorporating feeding healthy feeding practices, shopping smart, and avoiding or making healthy choices while eating out. We will end our discussion with tips to help you and your family be healthier and grow healthy. With growing children, there are many health benefits from supporting and finding ways to encourage health. With eating right, there is strong healthy growth because there's there are the right vitamins and minerals that help build strong bones and teeth. They help support and build strong muscles and organs. They build insulation around the nerve, our nervous system, and they're helped with making adequate blood cells, such as carrying iron, such as carrying oxygen because of the proper iron in our blood cells. We build and strengthen our immune systems with proper eating. Other benefits of eating healthfully include proper brain development. There are nutrients to support concentration, which also helps avoid sugar crashes. So our blood sugars and our children's blood sugars are more stable throughout the day. With the stability of blood sugars, it helps our brain send signals properly. There's good flood flow to the brain, blood flow to the brain, and also helps the brain develop properly when you give a wide variety of different nutrients to the body. It also helps protect the brain from damage because those vitamins and minerals will help eliminate any toxins that would cause any damages, and it will help keep an individual's mood normalized, especially from avoiding sugar crashes. Other benefits that our children can gain from being healthy and eating healthfully is avoiding health problems, early age health problems, and also as they age into adulthood. This includes proper physical growth and function, avoidance of chronic disease, and avoidance of constant infections. When it comes to mental health, being healthy and eating healthfully reduces a lot of different psychological issues such as low self-esteem and poor body image, depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, Alzheimer's, and attention deficit disorder. Once again, with proper brain development and avoiding crashes and keeping mood stabilized, a lot of these issues can be avoided. So what is healthy eating? We know there are numerous benefits, but what is healthy eating exactly? It is eating a wide variety of natural foods with plenty of colors, items that we can nurture in a garden or on a farm. Here's an example of a way to design your plate to get a proper intake of a variety of good foods. But now we're going to focus on the food items and why they're healthy. Here are the list of different food items that we do eat on a daily basis, and we're going to talk more specifically about how they can be healthy or maybe unhealthy for you. So with grains, there are two forms or two types of grains. We have our whole grains and our refined grains. On the slide in front of you, that is an example of a whole grain. If you notice specifically on the whole grain, there are three different parts. And those three different parts of the whole grain provide our bodies and your child's body with a lot of vitamins and minerals and other nutrients to help support proper development, growth, and sustain current health. When you do get exposed or you do intake refined grains, what happens is most of the part of the healthy parts of the grain are removed, such as the bran and the germ, and you're only left with the endosperm, which is 
pie, which is a bit nutrient-less and not as nutrient-dense as the other parts of the whole grain, leaving your kids with not enough minerals and vitamins to support that growth. So whole grains, they provide our bodies or and they provide our bodies and our brain energy with energy. It is an excellent fiber source, and that fiber source is important for avoiding blood sugar spikes and keeping our moods stabilized and also keeping us full, keeping our children full, keeping our children regular, keeping us regular. And of course, within all the three different parts of the whole grain, they're a great vitamin source, so you can see the list of vitamins in front of you. And also whole grains do have protein, so plants do have a good source of protein to help build a child's growing body. And of course, with the fiber and the bulkiness, it does keep you full and as well as having protein in the whole grain. Here is a list that you can that you can see in front of you that if you have the handout, you can print so you know what types of grains are available. So it's not just your bread and your rice, but there are a large variety of different grains you can incorporate into your daily intake. Now, fruits and vegetables, another very important part of healthy eating because different fruits and vegetables provide a lot of different vitamins and minerals, once again, to support healthy growth and maintain current health. I have listed on the screen the different colors that our fruits and vegetables may come in, and I listed what those colors actually provide us with. So when our foods are colorful and they are of different colors, there are different minerals and vitamins that provide us with benefits. For instance, red is cancer prevention, orange and yellow is immune system enhancement, green, we all have a better understanding of heart protective, eye protective, and intestinal health, purple, and blue, anti-aging and memory. White is cholesterol lowering and blood pressure lowering. So once again, just like whole grains, colorful fruits and vegetables provide us with a good source of fiber and it is a healthy source of sugar. Protein, important part of a healthy eating plan includes also protein. When pro what protein does for our bodies, it helps build all of our muscles, our organs, our bones, cells, and everything in our body. It keeps us full, and it does help slow digestion to avoid overeating. So these are examples of some foods high in protein. So the typical ones we're familiar with are meat and fish and our eggs, but also plant items like beans and nuts and seeds do have protein. We also, from these plant-based proteins, can provide our bodies with other nutrients that we that are beneficial, that we feel, okay, well, if I have more plant-based proteins, aside from just animal-based proteins, I get a better balance of healthy eating and proper growth. So if you eat any milk products, you get it, you typically would have your child drink a glass of milk because you want them to have calcium. But if you do things such as broccoli or beans or almonds, they also have high are a high source of all of calcium. If you do eggs for protein, you can do beans, tofu, and lentils for protein. And if you do fish for your omega-3 fatty acids and your DHA, you can also do flax seeds, walnuts, and savi seeds. So once again, just a wider variety of well-balanced foods. Now fats. There are two types of fats. We have unsaturated and saturated fats. They are also a primary source of energy for your body. So our whole grains are a good primary source of energy for our body, but mainly our brain. But fats are primary source for our body in general. And remember, proteins are our building blocks. So fat in food is different from fat in your body. So dietary fat that we get from food helps do a lot of different things, such as build cells, absorb vitamins, we, have, we build hormones, we feel full, we slow our digestion, as well as we insulate our nervous system. So when we stub our toe or when our kids fall, they know that they've fallen and they're hurt and they'll get back up. And we know that not to restub that toe. So here's a list of different sources of different types of fat. The parts in the green we want you to have as, well, not as much of, but we want you to have, definitely have more of. And of course, the parts in the red we want you to have less of in your daily intake. Of course, at the very, very bottom where it says industrial trans fats and it's right above harmful that we do want you to avoid bringing into your household, you intaking it as well as your children. 
because it does not support any type of healthy growth. Sugar. Sugar is a complicated substance, but there are good sources of sugar, and those come in natural whole foods, such as fruit, milk, and honey. Things that you do want to keep to a minimum, if not eliminate, so your child can grow up healthy and happy are refined sugars, and they come in different forms, and they have many different names. On the slide, there are just a few different names of some of those refined sugars, so keep an eye out for those things. If they are come from a natural source, you don't have to list the sugar, so it's always good to think about if it's something that can be nurtured in a garden or a farm, it is probably a good source of sugar if it is sweet. Beverages. With children, they do like their beverages, and a lot of times those textures and the tastes make it a lot easier for them to want to take in extra calories. So when thinking about providing your kids with proper beverages to avoid any type of health issues, main thing, as you can see at the bottom of this picture is water. Water supports a lot of our function in our bodies, our muscles, our cells, everything, our brains. So giving them as much water as possible is really important. In this example, it is more tailored toward adults. So you'll notice at level two, you see tea or coffee that's unsweetened. That obviously for your child would not be appropriate. It would go from water to maybe low-fat milk and not have that level two area. Of course, for adults, throwing in that level two gives you an understanding of how it may be beneficial for you. And of course, when we're looking at levels four through six, look how minimal they are in the picture. And we want you to make sure your children are intaking very, very, very low levels, if any, hopefully not, of those items. So how do you know what type of portions your children should be eating? Well, here's an example of the size of what your the plate that your child should be having. So for a typical size for children, so on, so non-teens, so it's both, so you're having your third your 12 and below, you should have a seven inch plate. And you're thinking, okay, seven inch plate, but in relation to that, I know I'm gonna need a fourth of protein, a fourth of starch, and half the plate vegetable. But really how much is that exactly? On the side underneath the broccoli, I hope you notice that there are a, there's a way you can actually measure how much your child should eat, and it is based on their hand. So if you do have a five-year-old and you want to put fourth of their plate as protein, note that the palm of their hand should be amount the amount of lean protein they should have. Their little fist should be their fourth of starch or grain item, and the rest of their plate should be filled with colorful fruits and vegetables. Here is an example of the different food groups, the servings per day, and for the different portions for different age groups for your reference. All right, now important in understanding, aside from knowing portioning, is to know how to read nutrition labels to find out, are these food items good for your children? Now, of course, we want more natural, unboxed items, but sometimes, you know, it's nice to have something that's a little more convenient. So making sure you read an how to know how to read an appropriate food label helps you pick better choices for your children. So we start right there to make sure exactly what would be the serving or how much should be given to your child, as well as how much is in the box. So in this example of macaroni and cheese, a serving size is one cup. So you know, and according to the label, you know that the container contains two servings. So if you're making it for your child, and you only have one child, if you serve them, ideally, you will have something left in the pot. You should have a cup on their plate, if not less, depending on how hungry they are, they are, and then you should have at least a cup left over in the pot, okay? You do then wanna look at the calories because the calories can give you an understanding of is it very dense or if it's very, if it's very low, which once again, when you're thinking about macaroni and cheese, obviously the higher the number is for a cup, then you're thinking it doesn't seem like a lot, but the calories seem a little bit higher, then you know maybe not necessarily a healthy choice. You definitely want to limit the nutrients that are highlighted next. Once again, as we talked about before, saturated and trans fats you want to avoid altogether if as often as possible, pretty much almost 100% of the time if you can, and of course saturated fats as you do want to limit reasonably. 
the next amount of nutrients, everything highlighted in blue, we do want you to have as much of because those are your vitamins and your minerals and they also include fiber, which are very healthy for you, keeps you regular, keep, gives your children the proper minerals to, and vitamins to grow and develop. You have your footnotes right here that just give you a better understanding of different values that you should be having based on calorie level. So that gives you an understanding, okay, for someone who's eating 2,000 calories, they should at least have 25 grams of fiber. So if we look at this example, it there's zero fiber, so it doesn't provide you with the ones that we want you to get more of. So that gives you good, some good footnotes. And of course, a quick guide if you're thinking about limiting or increasing, you want to know that anything that is 5% or less, that's low. So for the limit these nutrients, you want to get as close to that number as possible. But for the ones that get enough of these nutrients, you want to get those closer to the 20% or higher. Okay. So let's talk about reducing the intake of junk food. A lot, a lot of times kids are exposed to a lot of junk food. So how do you reduce junk food without having a battle? Well, main thing is not bringing it to your home not or trying to reduce the exposure to your children. So don't purchase the chips or the crackers or the sodas or the candy, any of those items. Just don't make them available so they're not constantly thinking about it. I don't want to eat my broccoli. I want to eat the frozen pizza. If it's not there in the house, they're going to think about it a lot less. And in place of it, try to stock your kitchen with healthier options, such as things that they would like plain nuts and seeds, low-fat cheeses, dried fruits, whole fruit, and whole wheat crackers. So definitely putting how your food environment in the house is going to be very important for the intake of junk food and reducing the intake of junk food and the desire to have those items. Definitely try making your fresh fruits and vegetables more appealing. The, obviously, the food industry knows about marketing and they make all their junk foods very, very colorful because they know it appeals to children. So make sure you have a wide variety of colorful fresh fruits and vegetables available to your children. Wash them and cut them and serve it with something they may like, such as peanut butter. Slice it into finger foods when it's very small and the kids feel they can grab it and eat it in a comfortable way. It's not is overwhelming and you can definitely freeze and puree those frozen fresh fruits and maybe some vegetables and put them into frozen desserts also try making junk food you know bake fries try sweet potato fries try making vegetable chips and make unbreaded chicken tenders so yeah, it does have a feel but it's still a healthy option and very big importance is be an example if you're not eating it then they're not eating it. You have to set the tone and be that example for them. If you're eating McDonald's and you're telling them they can't eat McDonald's, they're gonna feel they're gonna feel it's not fair and then you're gonna open up a battlefield. Definitely other ways to help with eating, if we're talking about eating practices, is avoid being the food police. When you're starting to interrogate your children or force your children in any uncomfortable way, then you're going to have a little bit of reluctance and defiance. So definitely avoid being the food police. Be an example. Once again, you set the tone. If you're following the rules, they're going to want to follow the rules. Also, be patient. If you are starting to change something, remember that it takes a lot to adjust to change. So if you've ever experienced a change and you know how long it took you to adjust, remember it's going to be very similar for your kids. Be sure to introduce new foods while continuing with one or two familiar foods. I'm sure there are many times like, oh no, mom or dad is going on a diet again, so we all have to eat this way. So try doing it. Okay, we're just going to try something new, one item while we still have a lot of other familiar things that you do enjoy. So it's just a slight change that may not even bring catch their attention. Involve your children. Have your kids help you. If they're involved, they're going to enjoy it more. And also, be mindful of what they like. Pay attention to if they like broccoli, then make sure you're adding in broccoli in different ways. And of course, make comparable exchanges. If you if they like burgers, try lean turkey you know, or vegetarian black bean burgers. If they like regular muffins, maybe try a sprouted grain muffin. Play with your food. To, I know it's one of those things you're probably taught when you're up, don't play with your food, but getting your kids to enjoy the eating will be a lot different. So ask them about the thumbs up and thumbs down. If they like it, give a good 
big thumbs up. And if they don't like it, they maybe can give a small thumbs down, but it also keys you in on what are their feeding preferences. You can do the dinosaur game where you're the dinosaur who has to eat the two miniature trees. Let your kids pick from a parent approved list. So this list allows them to think, oh, I have a choice and I'm getting, being given responsibility. So it lets them feel they have a choice, but you know you are also managing their intake to be healthier. Use a one bite rule. If anything, at least try it. Just take one bite, chew it thoroughly, and swallow and see if you like it. Be sure to reward good behavior, not with food, but reward their good behavior with praise, some high fives saying, oh, wow, now that we've eaten so healthfully and we're feeling good, let's go play because we're strong now. And make sure you have kids learn how to connect how they feel with their foods. Being mindful is a big way where they're learning. Well, they will continue to be in tune with their bodies and if it makes them feel good or not good. Other things you can do is try different colors and textures. So try smoothies. Once again, color is very important. Arrange their foods in a happy manner. Make it colorful. Make it pretty. Make it happy. Use different seasonings so that they can de determine if they like certain flavors. And don't force them to finish. Allow them to focus on their body. And if they're hungry, eat what they can. And if they're done, finish and stop where they're done. And of course, understand their food thoughts. Children are very important. A lot of times they don't think, oh my gosh, I need to eat this way because I'm gonna avoid diabetes. They think, I'm gonna eat this way. I wanna be strong like Batman. So I'm gonna eat this way because he eats his broccoli. So know that about them. So here are some examples of some creative food things that you can do to encourage your children to eat healthier. And if you have a picky eater at the house, you know, make every meal snack time, you know, offer a little something new for them to have, make comparable exchanges that they're okay with, make it fun, and review your mealtime routines. If they're a picky eater, see what you're doing at your household. Are you making that each meal itself, you're making five different meals, one for you, you one for your spouse, one for your older child, your younger child, see what you're doing and maybe change that so that they feel more comfortable with their eating patterns. And of course, expose them to family style meals where everyone's picking different things so they'll be more inclined to try different things because everyone's trying and not just them. Okay, be on a schedule. Scheduling is very important for children to make sure that they're constantly eating, being satiated. Introduce a visual ske schedule. The color, making things fun, making things pretty are very important. Definitely move, get them hungry, you know, make them run around so that because hunger will be your best friend and hunger is always the best ingredient. Take the mood out of food. So make sure you're reducing stress. You're not arguing, it's dinner time, I need to eat, we need, you know, just take it all out and just make it very calm, relaxing, minimize distractions. Make sure everyone's eating the same thing so they don't feel uh, isolated. And of course, praise and encouragement. Shopping smart is also very important in making sure you maintain a healthy eating pattern in your household. Have a grocery game plan. It helps you eliminate the need to suddenly grab something on the go because you just had a very quick or excuse me, a very busy day and you're exhausted. So things to consider when you are shopping, make a list, stick to it. Don't go when you're hungry because remember, hunger is the best ingredient. Avoid the center aisles where all the colorful boxes and things with the characters are. Designate a specific day to go. Look for coupons. Coupons are very beneficial. Join your store's loyalty program because you can rack up points and get things for free or cheaper. Buy food when it's on sale and compare brands. Knowing how to read labels, compare brands to see if you can get healthier options. And when foods on, if you can't get the food once on sale, ask for rain checks and pick it up at a later time if you miss the sale. When you're shopping smart to make sure your foods preserved is lasting you long, preserve your foods. There are different ways listed here to help you keep your foods longer and fresh so that you can actually make the lifespan of your food last longer. And so you don't have to continually run to the market and you'll always have something to rely on or go to if you didn't have some time. All right, so if you have to eat out, there are ways to eat healthier. Obviously, the goal would be to try to limit eating at fast food and restaurants, try making prepackaged meals and planning your menu, getting that grocery list going, getting that designated shopping days, using leftovers, and of course, having things to store everything would be very important. But if you have to, 
here's some examples of some prepackaged items. But if you have to, you know, look for healthier items like lean proteins, chicken and fish. Make sure they're unbreaded. Look for wraps. Look for vegetables. Try, don't use dressings. Not saying you don't use it, but keep, maybe you might dip your fork in the dressing so you have a lower calorie version. Drink water, eat slowly, and share your meals, and skip any added filler type foods like fries or breads, and try healthier items like sweet potatoes. All right, so here are some examples in the next few slides of healthy or items if you have to do the drive through. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but just so you know, you have some examples. There's McDonald's, Taco Bell, Subway, Starbucks, actually, Chipotle, Wendy's. Panera, Panera's a great place, and Burger King, KFC. And now let's talk about some tips and let's go over and review some of the things you would do in relation to these questions. So question one, how can you reinforce healthy eating during meal and snack times? So big thing, be an example. That's always one of those big reinforcements is set the tone yourself by not being the, the food police, being an example and being patient and definitely praise and reward. Did you think about also adding healthier items? If you did, that's good. You know, just always having something on your plate that's healthy and adding it onto their plate is also very healthy. There are a number of different ways to reinforce healthy behaviors, but those are some of the things that you can do just off the top of my head. All right, family scenario one. So grandmother, this morning I had made a cream of wheat. I had some meat and orange juice. I tried to stop my granddaughter, but she just kept walking and going to school. I was calling her, but she didn't want to stop. So what would you do? One thing you could do is work on getting the family to eat together, setting the tone where breakfast is made, you sit down, you enjoy, and you have a meal together. And also, maybe if she really is on the go, it's maybe finals week, she's maybe a teen and she's just rushing off, already have something she enjoys that's grab and go. Maybe she likes boiled eggs, or maybe she likes Greek yogurt. Go ahead and, and, a, and a banana, go ahead and send those off with her. Family scenario to Yvette. Usually when we have dinner, I just take a look and see if I don't like something, then I'll go back to my room. What would you do in that situation? Well, one solution would be to get her involved. Have her help with dinner preparation so she knows she'll like it. Get her involved with picking and plating and cooking and cutting. That will make it fun so that she knows she'll like it. Also give her an option ask Yvette, do you want this or this for tonight's dinner? So that she will be more inclined to eat. And of course, reward her. Yeah, be patient, be rewarding, be praiseful of when she does eat. And our last scenario is scenario three. On most days, Omar is home alone after school and in the evening. Typically, he will heat up a frozen dinner and often will snack on cookies, chips, and ice cream while he's on the internet and plays video games on his computer. So what can you do? Big thing you can do is have healthy snacks in the house and avoid bringing the junk food into the house as well as have, make or have fake junk food. So your vegetable chips available or your burgers that are black bean burgers, okay? All right, so our last scenario, Albert likes to add chocolate to his milk and he will only drink milk with the chocolate and also like sugary and salty snacks and rice for lunch. So what can you do? Once again, make junk food. Have comparable exchanges. Focus on mindful eating. Don't police, but maybe try other healthy things like frozen yogurts and smoothies to help him eat a bit healthier. All right, so that concludes today's webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. We do have other webinars available. In, there's a handout in your handout section. So if you enjoyed it, go ahead and download that and follow up with other webinars. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you, Dr. Liu, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Again, um, today's PowerPoint is in the handout section. If you'd like to print that out, if you have any questions, you can directly email Dr. Liu at her email shown here. And again, thank you for joining us and have a great and wonderful afternoon.